Hello, wonderful people. Welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. And good afternoon to all of you. And for today's episode, I invited two teachers that are currently working here in the United States in Arizona to share with you some of their experiences and um, what kind of preparations are they doing because we are going to open the school soon. So are you excited to hear from these teachers? And I am so proud to tell you that these are um, highly qualified teachers and they are excellent in what they're doing. And I, I will give a chance to introduce themselves. We'll start with uh, Ms. Irene. Hi, Ms. Irene. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dr. Arena. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I am um, Ms. Irene Chrysostomo. I am a music teacher. And um, I've been teaching for 13 years now. I taught MAPE in the Philippines, both private and uh, public school. So now it's my third year here in the U.S., uh, particularly in Arizona, teaching K to sixth grade music teacher as such in, in J1 status. So thank you so much, Dr. Arano, and um, for inviting me here. I'm really glad to share my experiences to all of you. Thank you, Ms. Irene. And let's hear from Ms. Christina. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Dr. Arena. And I'm Christina Toazan, and I'm teaching in one of the schools here in Arizona. And I've been in U.S. for three years. And um, aside from that, I've been teaching in the Philippines for five years. I'm a sixth grade teacher teaching reading, language arts, and math. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Dr. Arena, for being here. Thank you for uh, welcoming my invitation because I just wanted to inspire the teachers that are watching right now. And do you know that this is the season that a lot of teachers are applying and waiting for their interview and some of them, they already got their job offers. And um, this story that you're going to share with them will inspire them and will kind of teach them or uh, you will give them some ideas on what to expect here in the United States. So it's, it's my privilege also to have you in the Teacher's Best Friend channel. So uh, my first question is, can you share to our teachers viewers, how did you come to the United States? So share them your your journey here, Ms. Irene. Yes, um, hello everyone again. Um, I've been um, invited as a um, cultural exchange uh, J1 visa here in the US. And I am so happy um, to share our culture and of course our teaching strategies as well in, um, from the Philippines going back here in the US. And of course, when I, got and I get home again, I'm so happy and I'll be very happy to share what I've learned here in the US. So I have come here and I was um, interviewing one of the school and I was very glad that I was accepted. First, I was really nervous because I know that um, mostly in the US, they are not really particular of the music um, instruction. But I am really, really very glad that I was um, considered in one of the school to teach those kids or the, the students um, about music, which is I know it will be a first, uh, this, is, this will be a, a first experience again for them, from them, because um, last time they told me that um, when I first come in Arizona to teach, they told me that um, they don't know music. They have not heard about music instruction before. So at first I was really nervous to start, but uh, when I was accepted, I was really challenged and I was very happy that I was considered as a music teacher. So that great opportunity has, um, has given me a lot of um, inspiration, especially when I, has look, I was looking back teaching in the Philippines and um, this is, I, I thought to myself that this is a great way, a great opportunity as well to teach our kids here in the U.S., most especially in Arizona, our beloved um, Native American uh, students 
to, to know more about different musical instruments as well. And I'm very happy that I am here to share that talent and skills that God has given me. Thank you, Dr. Arano. Thank you, Miss Irene. Miss Christina, how about you? Um, when, um, last August 2017, I was encouraged by my teachers who are actually teaching here in the U.S. to apply here. And I was very skeptical to do so because I'm so, I'm so um, afraid to go out of my comfort zone. I don't know how to survive and I'm not used to going far from my family from my place and it's really hard. And my US journey is a very challenging one. So I started applying in December of 2017. And then I started doing all my requirements because there's a lot of states I have applied to. I applied in New Mexico, I applied in North Carolina, I applied in Texas and Arizona. And I can remember some other places and um, Last July, I was contacted by one of the schools here in Arizona, and I've been part of the J1 or the Teachers Exchange Cultural Program. And then with all those places that I have applied to, I asked God to put me or assign me in a, in a place wherein I would bloom, I would be safe, and it's not hard to adopt. And with praying so hard and that with the power of prayer, with God's guidance and God's will, I was assigned in, here in Arizona. And I could say that this is the best school and community that God wants me to be. And I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. That was a nice story. And I was telling my uh, teachers, viewers, especially those that are applying in different states, and most of them, they, they send applications to a lot of schools and they feel like nothing is happening, you know. But there, there is one uh, teacher, he's from Palawan. She did uh, submit a lot and then finally uh, she was called and now she's leaving. So what I am trying to say is uh, just, just keep on doing it. Just keep submitting applications to those uh, job openings that you feel you're qualified because there is really one that is, uh, you know, for you, you're, the right time will come, so don't give up. So just like what Miss Christina shared, she did apply to different schools and uh, finally she was accepted to a place where she is now very happy. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then, um, can you share at least uh, one or two uh, experiences, like positive experiences that you have as a teacher, like in your classroom or, or anything that you feel is like success stories or positive experiences? Ms. Irene. Yes, Dr. Arena, I have a lot of uh, wonderful experiences. If I would, if I would really share it to you, I think um, our time is really will, <laughs> will not be enough. Maybe but um, to share with you like uh, one or two, um, yes, just to share with you <laughs> so one or two experiences aside from gaining a lot of wonderful people in, um, in the U.S. or particularly in, here in Arizona and um, uh, also sharing our, our culture from the, for, to the Native, Amer Native Americans and knowing their cultures as well. And um, there is one incident that I am really, really um, happy and really challenged. And it is a really wonderful experience just by merely one of the students. Um, actually, it's not just one, like most of my students are, and parents are telling me how wonderful their performances are in music. And um, of course, this pandemic also, their, their virtual performances, which I didn't know that we can make with this kind of platform, but that is really one good and wonderful experience. Just aside from a learning and having a family here in the U.S., most particularly here in Arizona, which I'm very happy to belong. Thank you, Dr. Arena. Thank you. How about Miss Christina? 
Oh, yeah. Um, as I said a while ago, I've been um, teaching reading and language arts and math. But aside from the usual classroom routines, I make sure that my kids have some outlets on how to um, bring um, share their experiences and what they feel or how to express their feelings. And um, because I'm fond of writing poetry, that's one of the things that I always teach my kids. And it's so overwhelming and flattering that, you know, when they learn how to write, because at first they're just complaining, Miss Watson, this is so hard. It's what are the rhyming words that I need to think of? And then once they have learned and get used to it, it's so very um, flattering that they will try to write poems for you, for their family. And then when they reach the next grade level, they will come back to you. And then just one time there's one student, um, she have handed me a drawing of hers and with some lines, some stanzas. And then she said, I don't know if it's really a poem. I just got it. I just got the idea from the internet. And then she just changed the, the lyrics of the songs. But those words are very meaningful because it's very personal and it's this how she, uh, how she described me. So, so flattering and so happy that, you know, they learned how to write. Even if, you know, it's outside of the, the activities, the daily routine that we are having in the classroom. And that's one of the most precious experience or moments I have as a teacher. That's, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. And I know uh, during this pandemic, we all need to deliver instructions online. So uh, what, what was your experience in doing online instruction? Like what are the challenges maybe and some good things that happened during your online instructions? Ms. Irene. Yes, Dr. Areno, it is really hard, especially in my, on my subject, in music, it's uh, in an online setting, it's really hard if you cannot see the fingers of the children playing their, their guitar, their ukuleles, and I know it is, um, knowing that I am doing instruments and musical theory, I searched and suggested some musical platforms um, from our online uh, learning. It is really hard um, at first, but I um, our administrators, our principal is really very helpful and very supportive in so that we have to go through with all of that again and explaining that to the kids. But I am so privileged and I'm so lucky because um, my children easily follow, even though at first they are really adamant, they don't know what to do. Of course, it is a new platform for all of us. Like we change like 365 degrees and on online settings especially for music but with the help of some online platforms that um, I have searched in the internet for music um, they they was in, they were encouraged and um, we have come up with a very beautiful um, virtual performance for the kids and the parents thank you doc. thank you miss Irene how about miss Christina Um, when we first learned that we're going to have this online learning, I was so nervous on how to deliver these lessons, how to keep these students engaged. And truly, the first week of school during the 100% online thing is really hard because kids will just say, how, how are we going to log into our Gmail account? How are we going to do this? How are we going to present our screen and all stuff? But you know, the feeling of satisfaction when they gradually learn how to do it. And it's, it takes a lot of patience to do it because you have to ask each kids to present their screen so that you could teach them how to do things up, how to sign up or how to log into this program. And it's really tiring and exhausting. But now that we have finished one school year, I could say that, oh, it's just a piece of cake because, you know, kids learn on their way and even the parents too. They're the ones helping us to help the kids how to do their work and how to do it online. And we are very much appreciative with their 
with their help and support as well, and also the support of the school. And because we're given all the things that we need and all the um, platforms that we need to use for the kids to get, um, have them be engaged all the time. And it's very crazy at first. And these kids are all complaining, parents complaining here and there. But now look at us we have survived one school year. And that is one of the achievements that we could say very fulfilling. And we're now going to be in another phase. So come on, give it this up to us. We're all ready for it. <laughs> so that's one of the positive and the preparations that we have done last school year. And we're ready for it. Congratulations to both of you. You survived one school year in delivering your instructions <laughs> virtually. And I know it, it was really difficult at first, but uh, even for parents and kids, but we all survived it. And then now coming this August, we are going back to school on on-site learning. <laughs> are you excited or scared? Maybe. Yes, <laughs> yes <laughs> other, uh, no, we are. <laughs> but I know um, kids are excited to be in the classroom. Your students are looking forward to see you again in the classroom because for more than a year, you're just seeing each other on, on the screen, you know, virtually. But my question is, <laughs> how are you preparing yourself? And what, what are the preparations that you are currently doing for the school reopening on site this August? Would you like to share them to our viewers? Uh, let's start with Ms. Irene. Yes, Dr. Arena. Uh, but now that our school is reopening, um, aside from starting with the uh, safety precautions that our administrators, the, all the maintenance, everyone is helping like, um, teachers in uh, the safety precautions of the school um, having a summer which we are really um, there's an opportunity for us to teach our school our, our students on site last summer um, we had that breakthrough on how to to manage them on site again so for that um, uh, just a couple of days like uh, I think like four weeks of being with them we had that uh, dry run of um, the on-site learning for our kids and for me as a music teacher um, I am really uh, fortunate and our school is really fortunate and, my, and our kids are really fortunate to have a musical instruments that they can use individually I think and I've learned that we will be trying again a classroom to classroom um, instruction, most especially for us special teachers. And I am really excited because um, I can see um, in my students' eyes that they are really excited to try those instruments as well. And they are, um, those are new instruments that we purchased for them, for them to learn and, and for them to explore and have a diversity aside from academics, which is, um, I think, and I've seen it with, and I've seen that um, in their expressions when we have our on-site summer learning, that they are really excited to hold an instrument. They are excited to learn it again, face-to-face um, -face with me. Although we are still practicing social distancing, we still wear masks. So we are still um, uh, concerned about the welfare of our students because some of them, most especially our little ones, aren't vaccinated yet. And even if we are vaccinated, we still are doing our job to do safety precautions, most especially that we are um, in a school settings. We value the safety of our students. And um, of course, um, as, as a music teacher, as I travel from classroom to class, classroom, I will also get ready with myself in um, bringing all of the of the all of the sanitizers of everything that um, we have to for to protect ourselves and our kids. So in that manner, I think, and we are up to the challenge according to Miss Christina. So we are we are ready for it, Dr. Arena. So we are really excited to see this, the, the kids, I, most especially our students in the elementary. So we are waiting for them. I know they are also waiting for this moment too. Thank you, Dr. Arena. 
Thank you, Ms. Irene. And I like uh, what you shared that part of the precautionary measure uh, to fight COVID is uh, assigning each individual student like their own instrument. It means there's no sharing of instrument. Mm -hmm. So that was really wonderful. Yes. And then even though they are using it themselves, um, you also remember to sanitize it after and not to share it with anyone. So that's really good. I'm excited. Yes, ma'am. Yes. How about Christina? I'm excited too. <laughs> yeah. As what um, Miss Erin said, we had the dry run on how to do it on site. And I am just very happy because even if we've not seen those kids on site for a long time, they are behaving well. And we just have to make them used to wearing masks, washing their hands all the time from time to time, and practice social distancing. And I think that's the, the best way to keep them safe and healthy. And aside from that, I haven't been to my class classroom yet, but um, as for preparing the materials, I have bought um, a laminating machine so I could just have those um, laminate, um, laminated materials so that it can be easily wiped up and I can easily um, clean them up. And aside from that, um, we have to make sure that each kid have their own boxes. And those boxes will be filled with a lot of um, materials that they need for school because we encourage everyone not to share their stuff. And we have to explain it to them that it's not because you're not sharing your stuff, it means that you're selfish. It means that we're just going to have this one for our uh, safety measures. We have to be precautious so that we could not spread the virus. And then when everything come, goes back to normal, we can do and practice those sharing stuff again. And um, I'm just glad because they understand it. Even if at times, you know, they're being attempt to share their stuff and they forget to um, remember that they don't have to share stuff with their other classmates. But, you know, it's so, it's so hard for them, I know, to be in the classroom and act not normally, not do the things that they used to do. But um, we just have to make, um, sure that they would understand why these things are happening and we, we have to make sure that they always we always get their back and um eventually all things will be back in new normal you know it's it, it may not be the normal that we used to have but at least gradually and eventually we're going to get there thank you and uh, i am very positive that we can we can do it with all the preparations and uh, the safety awareness that you are sharing, I know we will be successful in educating our kids and at the same time, protecting them and protecting everyone. Um, I know with our teachers, viewers, uh, when you are applying or going to another country like United States, it's, it's so scary, you know, the, ner the nervousness, the uncertainty, you don't know what you're going to, you know? There are so many unknown that you are questioning or you have questions in your mind. But with the sharing and the stories that uh, you told today, I know most of the teacher viewers that are aspiring to come in the US will be inspired and um, they will be hopeful that after all, it's all good, you know? It's all beautiful experiences. I mean, it's not yeah. perfect. There are challenges, but the bottom line is it's all good. It's just how you uh, see yourself as a teacher and how you welcome all the challenges and how you face all the challenges. But I appreciate your sharing for today. Miss Irene and Miss Christina, and I hope uh, our teacher viewers and uh, the view uh, other viewers also are inspired with uh, your stories. And uh, thank you, thank you for uh, joining me this afternoon. 
And I think we need to say goodbye to our viewers. And I can probably invite you again next time to share some other topics. But for now, uh, we would like to say goodbye and thank you. So thank you, Miss Irene. And thank you, Miss Christina. And to all the viewers there, thank, thank you, you for all. watching. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the Teacher's Best Friend channel. And if you have questions, let us know. Write your comment down below and we will answer them. You can even answer, uh, ask the teachers. And uh, they're, they're really <laughs> Share some of their stories. So thank you. And to God be the glory. Bye for now. Thank you, Paul.